Hello grade 11 and 12 physics learners, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new, I'm Miss Martins and in today's video we're going to take a look at another exam example for Newton's law of universal gravitation. If you missed the first video where I went over examples of U Newton's law of universal gravitation, check out the description box below for all the links. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not yet subscribed. I really really appreciate every single one of you that subscribe, you become my students when you hit that button and you join me in these lessons. If you want more Newton's Laws questions, including Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation, but also 1, 2, and 3, I do have a study guide that you can get. You can buy it from my website. I'll link it down below. It's 150 pages. It has over 50 examples. So I hope it's really useful. I think it's really useful. Um, and hopefully it helps you as well if you decide to get it. But otherwise, let's jump right in to this video. Let's jump right in to this question, which comes from a past exam paper. And it says a body of mass 16 kilograms and radius of 0 0.1 meters. So they give me the mass, they give me the radius, is placed x distance apart or x distance away from another body, mass 48 kilograms, radius 0 0.15 meters. So now they don't indicate this on the diagram, but obviously the radius is from the center of the object to the outer end of the object, to the circumference. So this radius here is 0 0.1 and this object's radius here is 0 0.15. First question is state Newton's law of universal gravitation. This is such a common definition that you can get in your papers. It comes up in almost all your exams. And if you don't get this one, you get Coulomb's law, which is in the electrostatic section. And it's a very similar definition. So you need to learn your definitions properly off by heart. So here's the definition and take note how in this particular memo, they say two or zero, which means if you miss important keywords from the definition, which are underlined over here. So for example, if you don't say square of the distances, if you don't say between their centers, if you don't say product of the masses, if you don't say these important words, they give you zero. And what I always tell my students is that this definition is very similar to the formula. So if you know the formula, you see, product of masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their centers. If you know the formula, then think of the formula to help you get the definition. My next question says, give a reason why Newton's law of universal gravitation is said to be universal. And I hope it's obvious that it's universal because we can apply this law, this formula and this law anywhere in the universe. They now give us some more information and they say it is observed that the 16 kilogram body exerts a force of magnitude 2.3 times 10 to the negative 8 Newton on the 48 kilogram body when they're placed as is in the sketch above. First question, three marks, write down the magnitude of the force, magnitude, so when they say magnitude, we do not need to give a direction. Write down the magnitude of the force that the 48 kilogram exerts on the 16 kilogram. So if you go back to the information, they gave us information about the force that the 16 kilogram exerts on the 48. Now they want the force that the 48 exerts on the 16. So they've reversed it basically. And I hope you know that the force that, the, that A, body A, exerts on body B is equal in magnitude to the force that body B exerts on body A. So it'll be exactly the same magnitude, that exact same number. And the reason that this is the case, and I hope you figured it out, is because of Newton's third law of motion, which is basically what I just um, stated earlier. When object A exerts a force on object B, object B simultaneously exerts an oppositely directed force, but of equal magnitude on object A. Okay, so that's basically what they're saying here. Basically, they're stating Newton's third law of motion. So you get one mark for saying the same magnitude. So 2.3 times 10 to the negative 8 Newton. Please don't forget your units. One mark for saying what law it is applying over here, which is Newton's third law. And then your third mark for actually explaining the law. My next question, which is six marks. That's a long question. Says calculate the distance x. So this is the distance over here given on the diagram. And just take note how x is from the surface of the 16 kilogram object to the surface of the 48 kilogram object. Now, with that being said, 
I hope you know that when we apply this formula to the above situation, obviously g is a constant. It's the universal gravitational constant. That's a constant. We get it off the formula sheets. M1 would be 16 kilograms. It's the mass of object one. M2 would be 48 kilograms. It's the mass of object two. We know the force. It's given over here. They tell me that the force is this number over here, 2.3 times 10 to the negative eight. So we know that. When we solve, we are solving for R. R is my unknown. But what's very important and what a lot of students get wrong about understanding this formula and understanding what R is, is they think that R means radius. R does not mean radius. In this formula, R means the distance between the centers of the two objects. So R goes from the center of this object to the center of this object. That in entire distance over there, that whole thing, this entire distance is what we call R. But the question doesn't want R if you think about it. The question doesn't want the distance from the center of this object to the center of the other. No, it only wants from here to here, it wants X. So how would we get X? Well, first of all, we would have to work out what R is. So we would work out the full distance. Then to get x, which is just this part, we would have to subtract this distance here, and we would have to subtract this distance here. Now those things that I circled, the distances that I circled, this distance over here and this distance over here. What are those distances? Yup, those are the radiuses or the radii of my bodies. So the 16 kilogram had a 0.1, radius and the 48 kilogram at a 0.15 radius. So this distance over here, now I'm making lots of scratches here, but this distance over here is 0.1 and this distance over here is 0.15. So basically to get x, we'll take the full distance, so we'll take whatever r is, the answer for r, we'll minus this radius, we'll minus that radius, whatever we left over with is x. So I've written my formula first, blank formula first always. Now I'm substituting. So in the place of F, I'm putting the force that was given to me. Then in the place of G, it's the constant. You get it on your formula sheet. M1 is 16, M2 is 48. And R, the distance between the centers is unknown. Now, I've mentioned this in previous videos and I hope that this is something that, you've, that you know. If you're solving for a variable and your variable's at the bottom of the fraction, quick and easy way to think of this, is you swap this with whatever is on the left hand side over here. So basically we're going to say r squared is equal to everything at the top stays at the top but then remember these things have swapped places so at the bottom of here it's going to be 2.3 times 10 to the negative 8 and I always recommend using scientific notation when you're doing this because otherwise some calculators go weird and I'm just going to type the whole thing in on my calculator. This is r squared. Remember we're looking for R. So what's the opposite of square? Square root. So we square root both sides. So we square rooting this entire thing. There we go. So what I basically did is I'm just solving. I square rooted this side. It got me R. I square rooted this entire fraction and I'm going to type it in literally as is on my calculator. I get R is equal to 1 comma 4 9 two, three, eight, zero, six, dot, dot, dot. Take note how I'm not rounding off yet because we're not at the end of the question. Never ever round off unless you're right at the end of the question. So R, this R in the formula will always be in meters. So this is in meters. But now as a recap, remember R is actually the distance between the centers. So what R is, is this blue distance from the center of this one to the center of this one but that's not what I'm looking for remember I'm looking for x which is from here surface of that one to here surface of that one so basically I need to take the big long blue distance which is 1 comma 4 9 so on I need to minus this distance the radius of the 16 kilogram and I need to minus this distance the radius of the 48 kilogram so we're going to say therefore x is equal to 1 comma 4 9 dot 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 minus 0 comma 1 minus 0 comma 1 5 remember not to round this off so type the whole thing on your calculator minus 0 comma 1 minus 0 comma 1 5 and we get the following answer 1 comma two four now you may round off your answer is in meters that's what x is 
there we go. I hope that this has been helpful for you. Please check out the links below for more exam practice. I also have a study guide on Newton's laws that you can also get via the link in the description box below. I really think it is helpful. It's 150 pages long. Um, I can't wait to see you in more videos. So I really, really hope that you do subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. Let me know what you want to see next. Bye everyone.